Airplay. Hi, I'm Connie Kepfinger. Welcome to Airplay. Tonight we have a very special program for you by a very, very talented artist. Her name is Sophia Roma, and her play is about something that we're all thinking about these days. Who's in our cast tonight, Christy? Uh, well, first, um, I'd like to mention Sophia. She is doing the part of the narrator this evening. She uh, is playwright, screenwriter, and director. She's also a doctor, and she's produced, uh, excuse me, she's written 14 stage plays uh, produced off off Broadway, um, three of which were produced at La Mama ETC. Her play, The Class is Still Ahead, which she also directed, ran at the Cherry Lane Theater. Uh, toured Montauk, London, Moscow, Montreal, and Seoul. The Negro Ensemble Company presented The Meyer at the Cherry Lane Theater and was heralded by the New York Times for grinding down stubborn cultural borders with Love Symphony. Her cabaret emigre was lauded by the villager for delving deep into the dislocated emigre's soul in erotic quantum verse. She graduated from the Tisch School of the Arts, Master of Fine Arts, holds a PhD in philology from Mac Maxime Gorky Literary Institute, and a Master of Laws from Fordham University School of Law. She directed plays by Leslie Lee, August Wilson, and Austin Phillips at the Schomburg Center. And she served as literary manager and dramaturg of NEC. She is the producing artistic director of the Garden of the Avant-Garde Film and Theatrical Foundation, and, as, and is an international law and human rights attorney. Now to tell you a little bit about the cast, Anna Maria Jamalka, uh, is playing Milagros Alvarez, and she studied film and creative writing at the New School and received her MFA in fiction at Hunter College. She's an actress, director, producer, and published writer. Foss Duncan as Chaz Cormier. Foss is a 26-year-old from Washington, D.C. metro area, born on August 15th. Lover of life, passionate creator, considerate being, and actor of the screen. Maureen O'Connor as Shannon Dooley. She's an American actress, of Mexican and Irish heritage, born in Philadelphia. She's been on stage and off since grade school, and her first time on film was in 2017. She says she's got the bug, and now she's hoping she'll be working for the rest of her life because this is so much fun. Victoria Guthrie is Trooper Riley Wretched. Her theater credits off Broadway include The Shanghai Jester, Absolute Clarity, Steel Magnolias, How the Other Half Loves, It's Only a Play, the Pillow Man, Grave Murders, Diabolical, The Haunting of Patty Stranger, Counter-Terror Intel, and The Onion News Network. Victoria has appeared in over 100 films, television shows, and commercials, receiving numerous nominations for Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress, including a win for Best Actress for The Tales of Creation, the Brightside Film Festival in 2016. really fixed. Just briefly about the play, the virus Corazon is causing chaos among the human population. This stoic and unruly viral infection infiltrates all those who show the ability to covet, to love, and entraps those who possess the deep and insatiable desire to fornicate. Three outcasts have been weeded out to populate a new planet called the Voon. These soon to be Vanians are reformed and purged for their transgressions of depicting feelings and falling in and out of love. These natural human emotions deriving from the ardent passion and amorous adventures, which have particularly imbued the lives of these three slightly pariahs, are no longer desirable emotions and land all those who portray a propensity for showing feelings in the penitentiary or the psychiatric ward, as well as in freezers or in bathroom urinals, as punitive measures in the spirit of reformation. These outsiders are mandated to be beheaded by the guillotine at the hands of a sadistic, otherworldly, vengeful alien, an intergalactic trooper who uses her bewitching powers and stark wit to, in a totalitarian manner, elicit conf confessions from these fugitives as she cannot merely deliver these inmates traveling in an out of control pod to a novel full of hope planet without forcing these cellmates to repent first as ordained by the dictatorial government of our unholy planet Earth. Without further ado, we give you The Virus Corazon. The Virus Corazon, a sci-fi farcical intergalactic play in one act. The time, rather ambiguous, perhaps a skewed presence, reality, or the very near future. 
place, the vast expanse that exists beyond the earth and between celestial bodies which collide from time to time during the play. Various countries have laid claim to these outer space territories as manic space wars rage. However, the rule of law is non-existent here and literary anything goes, reminiscent of the unruly saloon days of the American wild, wild west. Cosmic universe galaxy music plays in the background, creating a brain breeze ambiance as an opaque pod orbits about space. Inside the bouncing airborne pod, three fugitives in shackles float about, never touching the floor of the pod. Shannon Dooley, a neurotic yet feisty Irish-American business entrepreneur from California in her mid-30s, Milagros Alvarez, a middle-aged and outspoken free-spirited Cubano emigre who is a celebrity contemporary artist, and Chaz Cormier, a young American of Cajun descent from New Orleans, who is a professional surfer, a Zydeco musician, and conjurer of voodoo spirits in the Big Easy. These are the unfortunate captives abroad, the out-of-control pod, traversing space and time with lightning speed as it battles with obstinate moon craters along its path and endlessly chattering pontificating inmates. Milagros tries to free herself from a floating cage in which she is concealed from the audience, punished by the current regime for being an asylum seeker. A charcoal sheet covers her cage from which only her hands protrude like wild branches of an ancient tree. Shannon Dooley floats about in a frantic state. Did you hear me? Circulating, confounded conundrum, viral infection spreading like hot fire. That virus corazon. That's what my mother kept hounding me about, day in and out. She warned me not to travel. Oh, you know how proudly intuitive Irish mothers are. Nag, nag, nag like Jewish mothers, only in a subtler way, grilling you until you want to bag your own flesh and blood and ship her off to some deserted island, abandoning her corpse there in the dunes. But when I was sailing off, I says, Ma, I'm not going that far. It's just to Idaho on business. It's a skip and a hop away. I'll be back before your next bean fart rolls around. For God's sake, we live in freaking California. Short flight, you know. But they had to stop us in midair. And then I knew, flat out, we weren't going anywhere. And Ma was right as usual. The bottom of the world had dropped out. Why do terrible things always happen to me? I'm a good listener. I, I, I steady people's shaking hands. I comfort strangers on buses. I, I hug stray cats and work at homeless shelters. Soup kitchens, nursing homes. I care about gas emissions and, and our deteriorating environment. I even sang melodically Danny Boy at my vexing Uncle Owen's funeral. Do you want to hear it? <laughs> it was so lyrical, a real slow ballad. I was nearly on perfect pitch. Oh, Danny boy, the snakes, the snakes are calling. From barn to barn, climb up the rainbow top. That leprechaun is gone and all the gold he'd stolen. The cop, the cop shall find you cause we're through. My devastated family was onto you, you dirty thief. I'm gonna beat your skull in. Good grief. Uncle Owen robbed my poor mama blind. I'm, I'm 
glad he's dead. Uncle Owen was very bad and screwy in the head. There you go again with your bullshit. I can't take your wailing anymore, mi amor. Cut that mierda out. These potholes are shaking with your sobs. It's relentless. Mira, everyone's a walking virus these days. We live with the fear of infection. And then one of us dies from it, it's a matter of luck and time. That's all? Por favor, deal with it, wench. Oh, and be a good Christian. Forgive your uncle. He didn't mean to steal. Oh, like heck he didn't. I should have buried him alive. That conniving swine. He never even did proper prison time for grand larceny. He always got away scot-free and brought my family nothing but misery. Still, death catches up to us all. In the end, Uncle Owen died a hapless pauper. That's mighty chippy of your girlfriends. Already cat clawing the hell out of each other's pretty faces. Yep, going with optimism too. And here I am, the dark gentleman savior stuck in between these four vacant walls with two crazed bitches. At least if you were both whores or something, we could get the nasty going. It wouldn't be so boring in here, you lady beast. But as heaven is my sole witness, I'm bored out of my mind. You know what I'm talking about? Don't make me sick, Chaz. Besides, I'm a full-born lesbian. Been out of the closet for years. You're brimming with all sorts of debilitating fears. You're all over the place, man. Great. Thanks for your negative comments. What about you, big woman? You in the mood? You kind of sexy, too. I don't discriminate when it comes to women now. They're all beautiful to me, you see? You don't stand a chance, hero of our miserable days. I possess exquisite taste in men, as in wine and horses. I'd never stoop so low to lay with the likes of you, King Kong. Are you serious? Lady, you are backwards. What's wrong with me exactly? I can make the earth shake and the lakes rise. I got that voodoo magic in me. I was born and bred on Bourbon Street. I was born in Havana, and I can show you a thing or two about sexy. From lingerie to tuxedos, Papi, you ain't working it right from the get-go, got it? Persuasive allure is an art form, and seduction is the trickiest trick of all. Girl, you the bomb.com. That's why I'm asking you to salsa with me, damn. I see no reason why I can't be your man. Just cause you fancy yourself some lesbian. Get off your high horse and coke, man. You got no clue who I really am. Quarantined. I never thought I'd be a pariah floating in outer space. It's so surreal. What's the big deal, lady bosses? So we get to kick it around this orbit and satellite for a bit. There's no harm in seclusion. It's kind of romantic, actually. To you, maybe. I wanted to get my nails done this week. I wanted to take my dog for a walk. I wanted to smell the salty sea air and gaze at the cascading waterfalls and plunging emerald-painted mountains. I'm suffocating here. I'm trapped. I even miss my impossible to get along with mother as strange as that seems. Although, there have been times when I've taken a knife to her throat and nearly slit my own wrists. But anything is better than confinement in this morbid abyss. Somehow, having us twirl about in space seems utterly perverse. Ah, that's where the trouble begins, girls. The heart wants what the heart desires, and we become a slave to our emotions. Most of them negative. Most of them clinging to us like slimy seaweed. 
Yet we can't seem to pull away to lift off gracefully. We infect others with our crimes of passion, felony spurred by the lingering law of the moment. We've all been victims of that. That's how the infection spreads. So say them learned scientists and the masses believe that charlatan crap. But we can't help it. We carry the burden of our immeasurable love in our war-torn coat pockets. To the ones we love elude us and abandon us. They run away, escape with others or worse. Simply stray out our lives for no good reason. The abandoned are discarded like faded sports jackets. Who can stand the pain? Maybe we're all sick. Love can't be measured by someone else's measuring stick. Lust, thick and heavy, beckons us to do someone in. That's why we've been quarantined. At least that's my interpretation of the thing that's got us contained. It's the blighted beast of lust and not compassion that's incarcerated us. We're doomed because there's no remedy for wearing your bleeding heart on your weeping sleeve. Brava! Brava, brava, gracias, Chaz. That was a memorable speech, truly. But we haven't caught this stoic virus yet. And let's keep it like that. Anywho, pot would help us out of this claustrophobic predicament. I can use some. Do you smoke, Sharon? Huh? I, I, I smoke all kinds of weeds and snort shrooms. I'm from New Orleans. It's the Big Easy, baby. We had no scruples about anything down there. We our own culture of hippies suits and imbibed mystic telepathic vagabonds. It's torment to keep up with the facade of that city. Plagued by storms, wiped out by maddening monsoons. I've always wanted to meet Mother Teresa though. If she be alive today, this virus thing will be gone like in an instant. I'm zero flat, without a trace. Lost to the respite of the mossy wilderness, the void of human. There, where the enchanted forest whisper atrocities and reign over horrid secrets, one and scattered by imbeciles. There, where the witches brew their stew. There, in the matrix of the underworld, where there's no one left to infect. Not even the lovely Easter bunnies forsaken over the holiday week holidays. Good for you, Chaz, that you smoke out of your ass and bear such insidious visions. What an interesting character you are. But I never asked you if you smoked or snorted, did I? I speak of no insidious visions. I speak of incidentals to the fruits of the poisonous tree. Whatever, man. I don't understand the wicked word you say. I drink, Maleficent, by the way. I mean, I like the smell of marijuana, but it makes me paranoid. <sighs> I sure could use a vodka tonic, lass. My head's drooping low and I'm sinking into deep depression fast. I need professional help. Dunkin' Donuts, perhaps. Or a quick fix of my hair and makeup would suffice. The whole world's paranoid, Shamika. This is a manic degenerate place we live in. I can't comprehend what happened to the human race. We've lost initiative. We make no sense whatsoever. We deeply hate and ruin one another, steal from one another, curse at each other, run over each other's sentences, outdo one another, uh, burglarize each other's thoughts, steal one another's thunder, and then kill in the name of love, in the name of religion, for the sake of our unborn children, for the sake of political gain, for the absurdity of money and those inanimate material objects we collect and adore? Spurred on by greed, we make others feed off our negative energy. 
propelled by jealousy. We, we cradle and praise the dead, but ignore and obliterate the living. We learn to kill with words, with gestures, with precision, with bitter skill. Who are we really then? We were better off as ignorant yet wise cave people. Easier to handle and simpler to lay to rest. <laughs> oh, baby, oh. This side of space conversation is getting too philosophical for me personally. I wish I was surfing now, off the coast somewhere, foot loose and fancy free, with some bimbo bouncing off the waves with me, splashing in the lemon drenched sun rays, basking in the heat and soaking in the tropical mist. Picture glistening wet bodies by the bay. That'd make my day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as you don't fall in love with that bimbo of your wild imagination and she doesn't drift too far astray, you're in the clear, Jess. Keep it cool. No strings attached. Don't be a lover's fool. Social distance and other heart is hard to come by. It's a bit of pill to swallow, Shannon. I plead the fear. <laughs> Wherever I am, I don't get entangled in the drama. Still, watch out for those encroaching, infectious emotions which this virus carries with it. I mean, it starts off truly unnoticed. A rose blush of manic lust. That slight, slight twinkling feeling down below and then a flutter of the worst kind of desire in the barrel of your stomach which hits you like hot lava spurting from an active volcano and suddenly you're overcome with a most evil temptation and then you fall prey to the malady it's got you in its pitiless grip you're done for you run the love fever for which there is no cure. We seek revenge. Yearning to slay the interlopers, the ones who meddle in our personal affairs and challenge our stature as competent lovers in the relationship we've been honing with practice using sheer tactical strategy. We forget to shave. We forget to breathe. Moments later, our chests heave. We flip over on our backs and don't sh quiver. And there's no stand and deliver in love. We expire with a frightful gasp for air, reaching out for those hands that once sensuously gripped our thin railed necks with ardent drive and glamorous and more, and by then it's over. <sighs> the virus has infiltrated. We've been time tripping. Say goodbye. Oh, I'm getting a hard on. Keep talking like that, baby. Don't stop, please. I got you covered with chocolate kisses. Mm -hmm. When you like that. Hey, 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 enough of that warped imagery. Keep your tantalizing porno fantasies to yourself, the both of you. We're freezing in here for a purpose. We need to be purged. It's quarantine time, not a Playboy Mansion session. Can't you see the sky has fallen on Guernica? What, what, what is Guernica? I feel sweaty. It's excruciatingly hot in here. I can't even breathe properly. I can't call my shrink. I'm dying! Must be menopause, finally. You're so riled up, girl. God, can't you relax? You're making me bad, and it's only been a couple hours cooped up with your loon heads in this lifeless pod. Things are getting mighty sad. This is New Orleans, boy. What if they don't let us go? What if we're kept in here like convicts forever and forever and forever and forever and a day? Eh? 
Let's not practice in the art of what ifs. I don't play those foolish games. That's futile. Besides, there was things than being someone's slave, like a hostage to love. But you wouldn't know nothing about that, Millie. I feel sorry for you, sweetie. What happened to hot tamales and big boobies, Puerto Rican style? What happened to Latina girls going wild? Cuban. I'm Cuban, not Puerto Rican. Cubana. Oh, please. You seem to have been reared on porn videos, cretino. Plead the fifth. <laughs> I ain't in no self-incriminating mood. I reserve the right to be very quiet and dignified. I'm getting stiff all over. I'm going numb. I can't feel my fingers or my thumbs. Rescue me, someone! Bendito, maybe you did get infected on that flight. Ay, Dios mío, we're all going to die, and I still have so much life left in me. I hope to be resurrected in the afterlife, because in this world, I have been utterly neglected and so disrespected. Oh, shut up, miracles. All you do is whine. There was one mistake I made. I should have stayed clear of those Asians from the Orient. It's the Chinese invasion, you know. These... Coffers run amok everywhere. They think they're superior to us. They want to confine us in one place. They're praying for the apocalypse to take place. They want to annihilate the human race with a poison sickle of this deadly virus. But I'm a proud Irish American and I don't bow my head to the sick, bad eating, burping, Sneezing Chinese men and their concubine women. That's just not who I am. Oh, come off that bi shit, Shannon. Those are such racist sentiments. It's beneath you. Come on, my friend. We were scream, remember? We don't have any symptoms. The infected ones were hauled off and those stockpile refrigerators or left in them stinky bathroom urinals to perish. Inventory has been done. Those were the ones branded with yellow stars on their tattered sweaters. Those were the ones who lost control over their emotions and got forsaken that asylum. We kept cool heads. China's trying to help us, not hurt us. Don't believe the ranting madness of Fox News. A wee bit late with their peace offering of candid help. Especially after China's sham cover-up, man. They want to stifle the American economy and, and take control of Hollywood like the Jews. They've waged war in Asian harmony on the global front. We should have wiped them the hell out. Cut that crap out, Samantha. Do you even hear yourself speak? I mean, what, what evil moves the ripples on your blasphemous tongue? You need to repent and do it quick, sweetheart, before your crippling words strike Jesus in the heart. My name is Shannon, not Samantha. So how come we're in here, geniuses? Can the both of you foolish leftists tell me that? We're obviously not sick, but we're not free either. And there's a social disease in non-liberation and in being held captive in a freezer box while being prodded by phony medical personnel. This is dangerous. And it's making me hyperventilate. I don't appreciate being probed by galactic police without a warrant or probable cause. My father was a cop. We weren't even read our Fifth Amendment Miranda rights. Chaz is absolutely right. We have the right against self-incrimination. I want to see my attorney. I'm in custody here. We're not really going anywhere. We 
have no rights in space. We're just prisoners with no release dates. Oh, you're a bright one, ain't you, Sheila? We're in a frigid hell, that's true. I'm very uncomfortable here, and so are you. We'll all die of pneumonia or be frozen to death. Forget the dreaded pandemic brought on by dramatic and insurmountable love for which there's no magic elixir that'll expunge our feelings of insurmountable pleasure. Her name is Shannon Millie, not Sheila. Not Samantha, or Shamika neither. People should call each other by their proper names. Your bitch wants to be taken seriously, but you don't want to play straight with each other. All you want is to demean one another. Silly and pathetic. <laughs> Women. They always at each other's throats. One gloats, the other denotes. What are you yapping about, Chaz? I have plenty of girlfriends who would climb to the ledge for me and jump at the count of three if I said so. But my name is Shannon, not Sheila. So thanks for standing up for me, bro. I may just grow to like you, don't you know? I'm here for you any time, sweet booty. You really are cutie. You're a sexist maniac, Chaz. How did I end up sequestered with a chauvinist like you? Dulce Madre Virgen Maria, estoy completamente perdida. Shannon, Shannon, aren't you the CEO of love until your arms break? That's what I heard you telling that scary space trooper earlier. Hell yeah, I was. I was Joked about that high class demanding job too. But then the authorities shut us down naturally. <sighs> I should have reconsidered the name of my firm in the time of viral corazon. Crazy, baby. <laughs> but I love me some rebellious heart. Weren't you reading the Wall Street Journal headlines? They can't claim a muse or shake hands with no one. Lovers must be on the run. Our emotions mandated to be annihilated. You're mad as a bat, lady. <laughs> you live in La La Land. I had my ears full of that jazz, the lamentable news. I was simply trying to make a living by being creative and staying engaged. It used to be that falling in love was all the rage. The theme of love burned like a conflagration upon the Broadway stage and simply leapt off the writer's page. My mother was a famous vaudeville actress. But don't call me crazy. My mama does that. Look, look here. I'm sorry, girl. I, I ain't even mean it like that. I, I don't even know y'all that well. My apologies for calling you Sheila, Sandy. It's so cold I can't think straight. My mind is being erased as we converse about horse shit. We should have ignored it. You know, someone has to realize that this isn't the right way to treat innocent civilians, especially Americans. I don't know how our dumbasses ended up in no man's land. I'm sure folks fall in love in other galaxies too. I bet your bottom dollar their hearts are broken more than twice and they bludgeon their rivals with machetes. Cheat and lie in the name of the rose. Yeah, mm -hmm. why in a jealous fit of rage, Anything is possible. Who can control themselves when you find your wife rolling in a haystack with another woman? Or your own brother? Or best friend? We're not impervious mammals. We're ruled by our feelings and shit like that. We fall under the spell of our own demons, making fools of us. It's human nature. No court of law can dispute that solid as a rat. 
solid as a rock fact. We live to love. What else is there? I agree wholeheartedly. You remember Oscar Pistorius? He bumped his sweetheart off on Valentine's Day. He didn't even have the use of his legs. He was handicapped, a paraplegic. My God, the horrible things people do for love. Oh, sweet Lord, have mercy on us. You should have ignored his dick speaking softly to him. Egging the poor so long, so unsoundly and insanely before, boom. Blowing that innocent girl's brains out. She was hot, though. I can tell you that, man. Chaz, everyone's hot, according to you. You even find an inmate's mugshot appealing. Hey, there's no need for that comment. I find that demeaning. I was never attracted to a single inmate in my life. So typical of your prejudice ass to think that. The pot accelerates in speed and shakes vehemently with the captive thrown against walls. Remaining weightless in this outcast universe, the scurrying of rats is heard amplified in the background. Shh! Escucha! Escuchan ese ruido? I, I must be hearing rats. Anywho, mira, caballeros y damas, we can't be reformed. We can't transform to non-feeling conformists. That would mean we're empty-hearted, brainwashed comunistas like los fidelistas. We'd be back in the days of the Cold War, and who wants that? This country is headed for the laundromat. And now we have to curtail our feelings for this and that so that we don't run the risk of getting infected with this highly contagious corazón virus. First, we wear the mask to hide our overhead, overheated mouths and warm lips. Then we wear goggles to camouflage our eyes, the windows to the soul. Eh? And finally, we sport space suits so that we're all indiscernible, individually unrecognizable and interchangeable. Esto es una angustia. We live in ridiculously absurdist times. Our spirit's been accosted by them carnivorous populists and the right-wing nationalists dueling it out for power with the screwy liberals who've also lost their scruples. Each party choking the shit out of the very noble principles of democracy and summoning the demagogues of chaos. Now our suffering bodies remain under scrutiny and hot pursuit surveillance by the brute and unbridled power of government forces. But where do we stand? There's no justice for the righteous woman, man, or child in the end. Our Constitution and its faulty interpretation has proven to be no better. You stop your stupid pontificating. I'm stupefied by the mumbo jumbo you just said. You've got crawly critters in your nappy head. Shaina, you're just pure evil. Just a very bad, unwholesome white woman. We should form a league of our own. A league of tortured nationals prone to obsession with love and passion. We have a fundamental right to love, mourn, and to scorn the ones who take our lovers home or, or steal our lovers from us. We demand proper due process. Yeah, I'm down with that idea. We need to sign lots of petitions and get in the heated arguments over Congress to range house rules. It's all up to us, I guess. Uh, after all, we're the citizens of this decrepit US. Oh, goody. We can create slogans, concoct hashtags that speak volumes and make folks cry and rivers like hashtag me too and, and hashtag we continue to screw and hashtag so bad for all of you. But what should we do to galvanize support for our Cosa Nostra? That's gangster stuff. Let's just go with the flow. Lay off the moderate of it. Can't win an invincible war one way or the other. Come on, ladies. There'll always be some member of society who disagrees or breaks the rules or agrees with you, but for all the wrong reasons. We 
can stop this virus. It's not out of our hands. The problem is we've carelessly unveiled our wanton desires so easily and nonchalantly. It's uncanny. Can't we camouflage what we stand for just a tiny tad for the time being? Seize these shenanigans, lads and lassies. Just until our secret desires settle down like fine dust upon the sooty windowsills of time. Play coy. So we're not on the constant run from the critics and the cynics who control, capture and contain us. Those authority figures who are itching to teach us lessons about love and life. I mean, they're already on our tails. They got the snouts of wild boars. They're bloodhounds ferreting out crimes of the bewildered heart. Oh, hell yeah. Uh-huh. See, now you're talking sense. <laughs> Can I be your next project, sis? What I'm really saying is, Let's not make it so darn easy for the secret society of virologists to locate us. Let's play somewhat hard to get. Let's lead the spirited world against the anti-sex police and anti-love Gestapo round by the nose into a haze and maze. We can draw out a real labyrinth so those watchdogs will never find us. We'll Furlow ourselves into the abyss, somewhere hidden in the crevice, beyond our corrupt universe. Now that's the plan, pretty young miss. You can say it, girlfriend. I'm with you on this bandwagon. All the way, I'm getting excited. Whoa, 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 not so fast. I'm staying out of this charade. I've already been found guilty of heart of bone crimes. That's how the virus creeps up on us, innocents. But on the other hand, Milly Vanilli, if we play our cards right, we'll be labeled awesome renegades and super marvel martyrs. Even from infectious viral corazon, we'll escape and change our ill fate. Shannon's right. We should tempt destiny with heresy and instigate an intricate plan. I, I'm definitely in. You always think she's in the right, Chaz, because pussy speaks the truth each night. Cierto? Still, there must be a viable cure out there. Somewhere. The pod begins to shake violently as the occupants of the spacecraft start to feel sick to their stomachs. Shannon disgorges the contents of her breakfast. Milagros prays in her rosaries and Chaz makes believe he's taming the waves at the high seas, singing operatically rogue ditties from the Pirates of Penzance. Lights crash on stage and leave the audience in the darkness. Crickets croak and toads make uncomfortable noises. Scene two, aboard the pod, there now floats an amorphous interrogator, Trooper Riley Wretched. This unearthly creature is a battle axe, warped ironclad sadist. She waltzes in with an authoritative air and a bulwark look upon her contorted, sharp-featured, sharp gorgeous face. She is most certainly inhuman, almost donning a carnival mask resembling a space alien, but the kind a teenage boy would drool over. She sprays foul gases about, enveloping her captives in nefarious soap bubbles and attempts to taser the inmates. She sports a body cam and pops pink bubble yum gum from time to time. I'm here to uncover your corruption scheme. Are you the three conspirators? You can't get away with this. I have even, I haven't even washed your hands, have you? I don't discuss business with barbarians. I need a pet to bismol. 
or something to ease my nausea. Oh, oh, I have this feeling of sickness so bad, coupled with a deep inclination to vomit. Please don't be so foul and disgusting. She already vomited all over herself and everybody else. Officer, Miss W. Wretched. Wretched. It's a very suitable name. You were at one. Don't be insolent, puta. I'll get the bottom of this intrigue if it's the last thing I do. Who's the head of your corrupt organization of organized love crimes? I want a list of names. Is it you or is it you? Wait, wait, what? Are we under arrest? Mm -hmm. Bitches know I'm Cajun. I'm a Zadeco musician. I played at New Orleans hip clubs and popular festivals. Even at the Fedor Door stage at last year's Spring Jazz Fest. I'm a regular down at Rock and Bowl. I take you to the French Quarter. You listen to the best Zadeco. It, it's quite a show. J just let us go. Be very quiet. Shh. Well, at least you're not Asian. So I'll pardon your abominable folly in the name of love. In love. That's what you are, all of you, and that's what you dream of, don't you? I've assessed your vivid dreams on plasma 76 inch screens. I've done my due diligence and achieved the apogee of professional surveillance. Take a glimpse of this racy footage. Do you hear the panting and the sighs? So don't feed me any lies. Trooper Ratchet cracks a whip and presents pornographic images on a mammoth television screen. <gasps> Look at Chaz humping that Asian glass. Oh, yuck, that's gross. Quit insulting me, leprechaun lady, with your own made up lyrics, a classic Danny boy. That song will never be sung at Irish Wakes again. Mira, look at this video clip. Why, that's Saoirse's bare ass getting down with and dirty with a horse? Oh, could things get any worse? I can't stand to watch these nightmares unraveling before my teary eyes. Oh, gosh. I'm here to comprehend the physics of passion. Like the passion of Joan of Arc. Now let's start with the illegal immigrant. What's your name? Albino. Why do you wear those flamboyant colors like a parakeet? You're just begging to get bitch slapped. I'm not an albino. I'm a purebred and I've made lots of money. My name means miracles in Spanish. Could you just set us free? I'll pay you off with my expensive Guano Cubist wave on display at Saint Georges Pompidou. The critics wrote my art was based and brave. Oh, sure they did. Poof, just like that. Set you free. But then what would you sacrifice for me? I'd lead you to the wizard burial grounds. Ancient souls, those who hunt New Orleans. They tell fortunes and predict futures. No, mm -mm. I'm not going to allow you to do that. And that's not going to cut it, <laughs> Cajun. That's not part of the equation. This pod will land on the planet No Way Out. It's named after the 1950s iconic film with Linda Darnell. <laughs> Have you all seen that film noir? The one where the white boy called Sidney Poitier a nigga? About a thousand times in one scene? That was seriously obscene. I, I sure won't forget that film. What do you want from us, Trooper Wretched? You want us to rat on our friends, our co-conspirators, on our unrequited loves? Is that what you want? Yep. Because we're too straight for that. 
Hmm. <sighs> Shoot, you know what? I'm crooked. I spit that shit out. Who was you hoping to convict again? Boy, you're gonna piss her off. Then you'll see the black and blue punches of her alien wrath. I believe she aims to deliver punitive measures. You best give up those treasured names, Chaz. I'm not afraid of her, Scotty. She's thin and weak. My advice is to keep our lips sealed. I'm going to use my intergalactic stingray weapon to make you talk. Then you'll be singing confessions like canaries in a cage. I didn't want to resort to those outlaw torture tactics, but you and your cohorts refuse to tell the truth. And that leaves me no choice. I'm, I'm used to interrogating magnetic leaders and uh, instead Distinctive, bloodthirsty politicians who fib on a daily basis. That's just what they do. But you guys, you hurt my guts. Spill the beans or you'll be under quarantine forever and a day. This is not an empty threat. I promise all of you that. I already feel displaced like a dissident. Cranked out by barbaric police tactics? A ban on love and passion? Who'd ever thought we'd live to see the day when love is strangled by the pigs at bay? I never thought to see that fear to be. And I could see the future when I gaze up at the stars. But now I our past lies in a violent dust. You don't have far to turn your gaze. You, you monsters. We're drifting past those heretic stars this instant. The ones that got away and there, there, plastered across the frightful night of sky, they'll stay. I'm feeling truly confined now. I need to just escape somehow. Those are, uh, some kind of tactics, Shannon. There are theatrics to absolute power, no? It's like the dictator runs his own successful show. And that's just what I intend to do. Oh, you mean like when the emperor of the empire signs his name on every stimulus check issued by the genteel government to help poor people out of this critical time, man? We've been sidelined. Trooper Wretched uses her intergalactic sting ray gun on Chaz. He glows like a Christmas tree adorned in vibrant ornaments and shakes uncontrollably like a raw fish out of water. You didn't have to do that, Wretched. Oh, on the contrary. <laughs> to your opinion, the arch. <laughs> I feel that I did. And uh, I warned him prior to the sting. I can't breathe. I'm an asthmatic. Don't kill the man. He needs a ventilator. Regrettably, we're out of those tonight. The feds refuse to help with the supply, and time does fly. But by the by, I scored 50 points for the Cajun young man. It's in my handy manual written right there on page 32, cold code blue. We've been instructed on how to handle you love birds spreading this virus like mad. You've made your own bed, fugitives, and now die in it. You're one sick puppy. This is a joke to you, right? We're, ju we're just supposed to take this shit? No. You mustn't just sit back and take it. You can put up a decent fight, but it won't do you any good. Where are your documents? Or are you a flaming refugee? I've had to deal with two or three in outer space. I shot them straight in the face. And then I enjoyed uh, supper with the other cellmates. And we said grace while stuffing turkey sausage in our face. You turd! 
Go pluck yourself. Taz, shush! Don't get us further in this mess! Yep, listen to this Irish trash. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's the first head of hair I'm going to bash. You can't just unleash this horror on us. We're not guilty of a thing. So we left and loved a few. I'm sure in your sadistic meager life, you did so too. No, I've always practiced abstinence and adhered to strict religious penance. I'm pure. Uh, look in my eyes. They're crystal blue, like the marble skies. I never speak any darn lies. I have an alibi. I do. Oh, honey bunny, please don't lie. And if you do, keep quiet, will you? I mean, why shouldn't she have some alibi? But she's concocted on the fly. So now you're going to defend your mortal enemy? I don't have any enemies. I'm a peace-loving vegan. Sass, I was being facetious. <laughs> and so it shows, uh-huh. It's written all over your tan, sallow, surfer face. Dude, you play with gullible hearts and are heartless with words. They, uh, they say, by the way, that vegans have a low sperm count. How do you feel about that? I'm cool with that. <laughs> I don't want little chasms running about. At least not yet. Then you admit to fornicating with the enemy of the state, do you not? What enemy? Which state? Say it! Someone call it out. <laughs> You're making me mad. Don't hide the truth. I'll soon find out. I'm here to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are fornicators and liars. You spread the virus corazón left and right, and now you'll be slaughtered and left to rot on another planet, far from Earth. This courageous task I aim to undertake. It's up to me, of course. Obliterated for feelings that you lack, <laughs> Riley? What kind of creature are you, wretched? Wretched. Trooper Wretched. Intergalactic Trooper Wretched. Pepper sprays Shannon, but the droplets land on Milagros, and she curses at the top of her lungs in Espanol. Ay, carajo! Mierda! Me cago en tu madre! Puta! Con! Take it easy! Take it easy! Eh? Ay, coño! Did you just use pepper spray on Millie? She did! What of it? What of it? My eyes is stinging. I feel like crap. I've had it. Yeah, basta. I want out. All in good time, con artists and civious enthusiasts. You are the blasphemous that need to be reformed. We're forbidden to mar a new fledgling planet full of blooming hope with your greasy mildew and your putrid lovemaking sounds. I mean, that's, that's unsound. You have no standing and no grounds, like anywhere, and, and not even to appeal. You stand before me, guilty as all sin, convicted for life without parole. This is wild. I need some Irish whiskey to unwind. My people revolted against an ancient order. We suffered at the bloody hands of the warlords and socialists who were depraved narcissists. We lived a life of disarray and full disorder among the whimpering, God-fearing masses. And the ones who disobeyed were shot and burned in sugarcane fields. I'm not into peasant support or an admirer of red poets. Dame libertad o dame la muerte. But I cannot fathom a world without love. It would be blue and vacant. And I'd have nothing to live for. There'd be no purpose to life. Mildew, please shut your trap. This is a hell of a bad time to conjure history up. <sighs> you are guilty. <laughs> Shannon's right, tiny miracles, <laughs> for the horrendous act of being a refusenik. 
Oh, refuse gay? Mm -hmm. Refuse nigga. She ain't even Jewish. How she refuse nigga? <laughs> you got all your info mixed up and shit. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it, Chaz. Melody has been given a free pass because she's Spanish and a minority. She won't be punished for revolting against authority. I'm running out of patience. I am. Assholes. None of you are following my direct orders. But I am. How so? I'm willing to be cleansed and falling in love to forego. Hi, what a crock of baloney. You just want to save your own neck, Sonny. I'm willing to wear bandages and stitches over my pulsating heart. I've been ready to confess from the start. Now I'm going to barf. Shannon's lying through her teeth. She's a fan of hunky beef, as those fetish reels prove. She's not fireproof. And gets turned on by horses. Hell, yeah, damn. Oh, don't be so graphic and lewd, Chaz. The high price of war against this virus must culminate in penance and utterance of satanic verses from our monarchist apocrypha. Those biblical writings are not an accepted form of the parts of the scriptures, droop and wretched. Choose some other verse for us that we don't digress like fiends scapegoating through an alternate universe. Oh, I'm so awfully tired and confused. I need an Advil, please. My pelvis hurts. I, I need relief. Shh, don't say that. That's as good as a confession, dumbass. Don't confess to feelings. You don't feel pain, remember? And if I whacked you upside the head, like this, and whacked you upside the head, you'd feel the same. Surrender. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hang Shannon by her knees. If you don't confess, Shannon, that is, and I'm going to do as I please. Have you been having lurid sex in here amongst each other? This is a sacred space. <sighs> My straying sisters and wayward brothers. That's impossible. This mission pod lacks the gravity. Bees couldn't copulate in here. There were no flowers and no birds that sing, no liquor, and no gypsy kings. Oh, who'd want to shag in this stinking pod for crying out loud? We want to get out. Please, let us go. We won't copulate with anyone. Are you declaring martial law, Ratchet? That is a fair policy under these grave circumstances. You're being way too bossy, Riley. You need to take pity. Pity? Don't be silly. This is the nature of my position, wayward lassie. And Milagros here, she's being awfully sassy. Have you even stimulated anyone's awakening lately? Just answer the question without thinking it through. Do it quickly. I order you to. You order whom to? Which one of us goes first? Responding to your bogus question, of course. Can anyone jump in? My hairline's getting thin. I am growing livid and impatient from within. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your freaking house in. I am going to throw a bomb in here. Have you cellmates lost all fear of authoritative rule? Should I draw out my galaxy swords? Look, I don't like to mince my calculated words. I've been trained by the di dictatorial titans. So don't mess with me, you loose bastards. There is carnage from the virus corazon. And to this carnage, if you won't mend your ways, as you can see, a lot of you are prone. I ain't succumbed yet to any carnage. I got a black belt in the crowd that I'm making love, see? I'm an expert. <laughs> I've heard girls brag about that in the sports locker rooms and on mountaintops 
in the hills and dales, and in danger courtyards where the pine trees whisper. Aren't you the shit? This is my last warning. We're going to cast nets wide against the common enemy. So either you confess to your foibles this instant, or um, you'll be tackled and bemoaned for your resistance. I'm willing to rewind my past transgressions. I'll repent, you see? All future love, I will forfeit instantly. All my lover boys and sex toys meant nothing to me. Stop where you are, Shirley Temple. You don't mean a word of what you say. I have viable proof of your debauchery, which happened yesterday. Pray tell, baby, pray tell. What the hell happened yesterday? Was that captured in footage screen moments ago? That was quite a trippy show. Sandra Aki came hard at me and touched me in the most inappropriate way. That's what happened yesterday as I was sipping my tea in the parlor at exactly three. So, uh, Sandra is revealing that, I mean, has been revealing that she's gay? Shannon's gay? I mean, is that what you're about to say? No, 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 no. I'm the lesbian of the day. And I did not think that Shannon swayed my way until she proved to swing the other way. But who am I, eh? El albaino de la Habana, to judge anyway. I'm not heavenly manna. Rat! You had to bury me alive, you cunning cat. Where's the God in your rosary? You're, you're not even religious, you biddy. I am too, but wretched had to know that I'm on to you. You covet just like we all do. I'm getting horny. I never had a chicken space before. It may sound base, but I'm dying to hear more. Don't you morons understand my subtle hints? If you don't alter your licentious state of minds, curb your ego and your appetite, your promiscuous and sexual manners, it's the end of the human race as we know it. <sighs> Idiot savants. You are a space alien. You're not human. Don't speak of earthly things because you don't know what you're talking about. And your purple Snake tongue is sticking out. If you want me to find out so much about love, show me what love is all about. But then you'll all be fried on the spit grill in Old Camelot. Don't oh, dig our grave any deeper, Sharon. Don't chastise super wretched for not being a real human. It's not her fault. That's how the creature was born. Don't scorn her with derision. It's not her decision to take an alien form. Super Wretched prepares a noose by tying a thick knot and searching for a hook in the pod. She looks above and she looks beyond the premises, sniffing the ambiance out. Can't hang nobody in here. We're weightless and we float, remember? <laughs> Wait. Super's pretty well prepared. She's really good. Claro. See? She knows her job and how to do it. But do we? Are we prepared to rat our lovers out to set ourselves free? No. To me, that's pretty selfish and petty. You're such a moralist, bitch. Keep out of my business, a silent seeking bimbo, or I'll have ice on your indigent ass, pronto. Millie is a celebrated contemporary artist. I know where she is domiciled. On earth, down below. It's in Corona Queens, you know. She's 
got a studio the size of Buckingham Palace. But I don't envy her. Wench! You belong in the trenches, fighting imaginary wars or in the barracks with male whores. There you go again. Our lives hanging by a thread, and you annoying mad Moises can't put your differences to bed. Precisely, Chaz. It's a sad fact of human existence that even in the darkest moments of your lives, your human lives, when your mortality is at stake, you prey on each other, scold each other, and outdo one another. This is the reason for man's downfall, and that is my last warning to you all. I'm going to strip search you now. Get on your knees. You mean God is punishing us for being bad? For the egotistic lies we led? Hanging out in private chat rooms with our Instagram psycho fans and Facebook followers? TikTok? Our population's out of luck. Jesus died for our sins, Chaz. Christ knows we're all sinners. We must ask for forgiveness and be immersed in the Lord's kind graces to be pardoned. Then this virus will be eradicated. Poop dreams, Mildred Pierce. You're just blowing smoke up Chaz's brown ass. Bigot. Retarded idiot. Are you ready to confess? I'm not into digressing much. And we're almost at our final destination. Just look out there. We are passing Mars and Uranus. We've orbited around the sun. And now our journey's nearly done. I'll confess. I slept with my boss, Bob, twice. She was homely, but, but kind of nice. I used her as a stepping ladder to a higher position in the gallery. I am guilty, yes, but I needed the money badly. Trooper Wretched tightens the noose and floats up to the ceiling like a ballerina fairy with ease, grace, and finesse. She obviously knows what she's doing. Oh, anyone else want to play a reindeer game with me? I'm up for bullying the life out of all of you. <laughs> so spare me. Tell the truth or I'll have your head for breakfast and I get up nice and early. So quit acting squirrely. I smoked hashish in high school and fooled around with my teacher. It was hot and heavy. <laughs> I didn't mean it really. I was a kid. He, he should have known better than to take advantage of me like that. Sad things. I feel so sorry for the both of you. Girls getting the head by giving head. Mm. I don't need anyone's pity. I'm a self-sufficient person. None of you need pity. Not really. But you should accept the purge. I forbid you to diverge or you'll face the scourge. You'll confess one by one or you'll be submerged by doom at our next stop on the planet Boon. Your confessions are for my personal dossier. I aim to be promoted by Herr Bonanian, our superior millionaire. Your confessions will be signed in your own blood and sealed with the heat from your felonious mouths. Should you refuse and have the ruse, the lot of you shall hang on yonder, over there, up there, on that swinging noose. I'll never set you loose. I'm the ruler of these spatial parts. Now one last time, who's willing to come forth without coercion? Come clean. Up to this point, I've been using gentle persuasion, but I've had my fill of your confetti fabricated nonsense. So I'm going to count to three. One, two, if you deny my will, notice I didn't count to three, the higher court of hypocrites will not reverse your sentence on appeal. Pop goes the weasel, baby. This shit's getting real. Our aliens getting mean. 
I bet the troopers got some intriguing plans. No, no, no. If we stick together, we can defend each other like a couple of master pitchmen. We devised a targeted plan from the onset of our journey, remember? Now let's tighten the plot and follow our blueprint. I'm fending for myself, no doubt. And it was me who hatched that plan because I thought it was worth a shot. But you laughed at me and called me different names. So I'm not sharing any future plans. Melodic. I just want to get out of here. Come on, please, let me to bleep out, man. I never value my life the way I do right now. Damn! Trooper Wretched ties a noose around Shannon's neck, but her head keeps floating free from the noose as Riley tries to keep Shannon's head steady. You got to go first, Sheena. You will hang a hero if you relay the list of summer of love fanatics and easy riders. All of those raunchy, raucous bastards that you've shagged under the silky covers. I know. I told you. I'm ready to confess. So thank you. Spare me. You can't even get the noose around her neck. She's gonna die faster out of fright. She'll have a heart attack and then you'll be out of Irish luck. That's right. So back off, bitch. Let me do my job, witch. Boo. Until I'd been shaken, rendered out of whack by the virus carazon and its infiltration back home, I was a smash hit. I was. Reveling in the unity and spirit of dictatorship. I was an outdoor spectacular. I had the grit, the true wit, and all the props to unleash vengeance and to punish the sly perpetrators like you. Now, I'm at a loss. While the virus was performing hits in Italy and Spain, I was knocking out amorous inmates on my own terrain. Call me insane, but I know how to perform. I am the epitome of skill in the art of totalitarian showmanship. I've made my claim to power and I run this pod with pristine mannerisms. I am not a slave to love. I rise far above those saps who are prone to that ailment. Now that may seem cold to the members of your unfortunate world, but at this moment, we're landing on the surface of the moon. So your time to repent will be here very soon. I'm gonna bow my head down low and pray. May Shannon be the one that hangs today. Amen. I gotta get out of here. I got to run. I'm a fast swimmer. I'm a fast concealer and a potent healer. Shannon is the rotten one in here. She the one who hold her passion near and dear. What a setup, man. I've been ratted out by my contaminated pod mates with faulty principles and high demands. My compliments, rats. I'll see you grappling at the outskirts of some mysterious universe with that alien seated on the golden throne. Still, I've been blessed. But Christ is bringing my ass home. Suddenly a crater hits the pod hard. All lights are suddenly snuffed out. It's dead quiet on stage, save for the scratching of a needle against an ancient vinyl record playing in the death car by Iggy Pop and Goran Bregovich. End of act one. And that's the end of Airplay 2020.